Now we see these little A's, which represent the actions, and when we mouse over them, we'll see what the action is. Now we're going to add a guard. A guard allows you to prevent a transition completely if some criteria is not met, and to give the user a warning message saying that it is not allowed because the criteria hasn't been met. So in this case, we want to be sure that the person who approves the request, who changes the status to approve, is actually the manager and not someone else, not the employee, for instance. So we can compare the value in one field to another, and here we're going to compare the value in the updated by field, which is the person's name who updated it when that transition went to approve, with the manager name. And we're going to want to be sure that those two values are actually equal. So we're going to say if the updated by equals the manager, it's OK. Otherwise, we're going to prevent the transition from happening. So we've added just a few actions here to our workflow. Now we're going to save the workflow. And we're going to go back to the table wizard and work on the layout. We add the workflow first because it creates a field that we also want to add to the layout. So we want to have all our fields ready before doing that. And the workflow, when you create it, creates a field called workflow state. And we often like to change the label of this field to status. And that's what I'm doing here. Now we're ready to lay out the fields on the form. We have the layout editor here, which provides us with a drag and drop interface where we can design exactly the tabs that we want the form to contain, the wording on those tabs, the wording in text headings on the form, and which fields go on each tab. So we have a common area above the form that I'm moving some fields to now that appears above the tabs. And then we have the tabs below that. Now we're going to drag some fields down after creating a little text heading. We can provide text headings that organize the form and make it look nice. And now let's drag some fields down for the requester information. And then we'll add another heading for the trip information. You can have as many columns of fields as you like here. You can add additional columns, you can add rows, you can add tabs, so that you put the right number of fields in each row. Fields that are wider than a value that you specify will wrap over two columns when they're displayed. You can also use the HTML editor to change the appearance of these headings. Their appearance is also controlled globally by the look and feel wizard. OK. Now we've added our expense information, and we're going to add another field to the common area. So we'll add a row and put the maximum approved up there so we can see at a glance while looking at the other details. And now let's add the comments field down below. Now we have a tab for communications. We usually like to add a tab for the history field. The history field is a system field that tracks all changes to the record. It's created by default when you create a new table, as are these other fields, the date created, date updated, updated by, and so on. These are all automatically created with the table. Now that we've done that, we can have a look at the form and see how our layout looks and whether we're happy with the way we designed it. Notice that the blocks are all the same size within each column at the moment. That's a layout option that we can leave or we can change. It's this alignment option here that says expand the input boxes to align them. I tend to like the non-align, so I'm changing it. And now we can copy this whole layout to the end user interface. We have two independent layouts for end users and staff users. Usually it's easiest to just copy one to create the other to get started, and then to make any changes you need. Now we're done with the table wizard. Let's see how it looks to create a new record in the table. In this case, I'm going to create a record on behalf of someone else, and I'm looking up this user by her name and pulling her into the record. So we've populated all those user fields with her name, manager, and so on. And now we're filling out the required date fields. The fields up at the top under the requester section are shown as hyperlinks, 
If you click on that hyperlink, it will take you to that user's record to view other fields and information for that user. Now let's type in the purpose of the trip. And then we'll go ahead and set the currency values. Now we click the button to add up the total, and we're done saving our first record. Now we see we need to create a view for the table, for the records that will be shown in this table. So I'm going to create a default view for this table that will display the records with the fields that I'm interested in seeing. You can specify the exact column width for any column that you add here, but generally choosing the automatic default option will give you a pretty nice looking display. And we can drag and drop the fields to put them in the order we want. You can also put them onto multiple rows if you want to. Then we're going to give our view a name. This will be a saved view. As an admin user, I can create any number of views and make them available to other users when I'm done. I decided I'm going to go back now and do some row coloring. We can make the display have different colored backgrounds or fonts for rows in the table based on the value in any choice field. So in this case, I've chosen the status field, and I'm going to show slightly different colors if the status is approved versus pending approval. So we can see quickly which ones still need approval and which are ready to go. Now I'm applying this view to be the default view for all teams in the system. And now we can see the yellow background for the pending approval record that we just created. Now we can look at our record that's been created and let's look at the history. And we see all the date fields automatically populated. We can also see that the workflow ran. We can see all, any rules or workflow that have run here. And we see that it sent an email to the manager. And now if I want to see the content of that email, I can go to the communications table here and see who exactly it was mailed to and what the text said. So all emails sent to and from the system appear here. Now I can go back and let's pretend I'm going to try to approve this record. I'm going to change the status to approved and enter a value in the number field. And when I do that, I'll see which actions are going to occur. And one of those actions is that guard that prevents me from doing this because I'm not the manager of this user. Chris Johnson is the manager. So I'll be unable to save, to save my change to the status. I will have to put it back to the status it was in if I want to save my changes. So there's an example of a guard in action. Now as the final step, we'll typically set up some charts and reports that will give us some statistics on our data. In this case, we're going to just create a simple chart showing the total travel expenses segmented by depart. We can choose different kinds of output for our report. In this case, we'll do a chart and an HTML report. And we'll do a simple pie chart with a slice for each department. And we'll be totaling up the values in the total estimated expenses field. We can total on any field. We can also run averages, minimums, maximums, and we can subtract one field from another, and so on. So it's quite versatile in terms of getting the statistics you want. Now we have some formatting options for the chart, and then some grouping options for the HTML report, and we're choosing which view we want to use to display the data in the report. And we can schedule a report to run at any interval every day, every 10 minutes, however often we want, and to be automatically emailed or distributed to people. And that's how long it took to set it up, less than a minute. Here's our pie chart shown after we've created a few more records. This completes our presentation. We hope it has demonstrated how quickly and easily you can set up a simple business process using Enterprise Wizard. Obviously, we're not quite finished. We would probably add some more automation, some more fields. We'd still have to set up group permissions and there's some other basic setup like outbound email addresses and things like that that would need to be done. But all of that can be done in less than another hour of time, and you'd have a working application ready to start using. Please call us anytime if you have questions or would like to see a personalized demo of how the product can meet your needs. Thank you.